In problem number 43 of section 1.2.1, we're given a situation in which we have a heater in a cold room. We know that this heater can heat up the room from 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 80 degrees Fahrenheit in 20 minutes. So we're given a few questions about here. Oh, and also we have the temperature in the room m minutes after the heater is turned on is given by this equation here. So first question is, what is the average rate of change of the temperature in the room over the entire interval? So the entire 20 minutes. So over the entire 20 minutes, we have that the average rate of change is equal to, well, the temperature at 20 minus the temperature at 0, at time 0, over 20 minus 0, or 20. Well, we know that this function represents the temperature in minutes after the heater is turned on. And we're given that the heater increases the temperature from 40 degrees to 80 degrees in 20 minutes. So we know that T of 20 is 80. And T0, the initial temperature, is just 40. And that's over 20. Here we have 80 minus 40, or 40 over 20. or just 2. Now this is going to be 2 degrees per minute, keeping track of our units because our numerator here is in degrees Fahrenheit, and our time is measured in minutes. All right, so for the first 10 minutes, do a similar thing. And now we'll, our time interval is 0 to 10. So we'll have in the numerator, the change in temperature, so T of 10, and then T at time 0. Now over change in time, which is just 10. Now T of 10 is going to be minus 1 tenth times 10 squared, or 100, plus plus 4 times 10, 40, plus 40, minus t, uh, or t times 0, which is 40, all over 10. So it works out. We have in the numerator, we're going to have cancellation here. We have um, minus 10 plus 80 and minus 40 over 10, which works out to uh, 30 over 10 or 3 degrees Fahrenheit per minute. Now part three is so similar that I'm actually going to let you do that. It's really just the same thing, only the time interval is going to be 10 to 20. So the average, the average rate of change is going to be t of 10 minus, uh, or excuse me, t of 20 minus t of 10 over the time, in the time over the change in the time interval. All right. So next step is the instantaneous rate of change at five minutes, 10 minutes, and 15 minutes. Now the Hard way of doing this would be to actually plug in, you know, the definition, you know, plus h, take the limit as h goes to zero of the temperature function. But temperature function in this case is a little complicated. So if you recall to problem number nine of the same section, we've actually already done that. We found that if we're given a function, um, say j of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not equal to 0, then the instantaneous rate of change uh, at the point x, which is the same as the derivative, or j prime of x, is equal to 2a plus b. Now, this formula is going to make life a lot easier in this problem. So we know that t prime of m, this is using uh, 
problem number nine from section 1.2.1. We know that t prime of m is going to be equal to, well, 2 times a. Now, a in this case is minus 1 tenth plus b, which b is now 4. Oh, and I made one error up here before, which I hope you caught. I have 2a, it's actually 2ax plus b. If I didn't put that x there, that would actually just be a constant function, and that's definitely not true that um, the derivative of a second degree equation is constant. <laughs> um, so this is 2 times minus 10, minus 1 tenth x plus 4, or minus 1 fifth x plus 4. Now we can just st stick in um, each of these uh, values for x here, and we should be set. So problem number, or part i, we're going to have t prime of 5 is going to be equal to minus 1 fifth times 5 plus 4, which is just minus 1 plus 4, or 3. And for the second part, we're going to have 10 minutes. So t prime of 10 is going to be minus 1 fifth times 10, plus 4, or 4 minus 2, or just 2. And finally, t prime of 15 is going to be minus 1 fifth times 15 plus 4, which is negative 3 plus 4, or just 1. And all of these here are going to be degrees Fahrenheit per minute. And the last thing I'll point out here is another, yet another mistake I made here. When, we, when I wrote the derivative here, I wrote t prime of m, and then I decided to write all my variables in x, which really, I mean, we could write any letter we want there, but just to be consistent with the formula, I'll rewrite that, with, rewrite that as m. 